Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 20. Well, lately I have, uh, I have brought up things, and right now it escapes me as to why I did, did that, but I brought up um, experiences in my life that I was suspicious that are not experiences in your life. That I had brought up, um, I brought up, and by the way, I love every one of you in here. Hey. Amen. Uh, I asked a question, does anybody know uh, a veteran from World War I? And nobody, nobody knew a veteran, or I do. Uh, was in the uh, Air Force, and it may not, even at that time, it may not have been the United States Air Force. I, it may not have even been called that in World War I. A veteran, he flew, he trained, went across enemy lines. They robbed, uh, uh, they wanted to get the uh, strings out of a piano to stabilize the wings of a biplane or a triplane. I, I knew a veteran, and uh, it was a customer of mine. Last time I saw him was 1976. And, and we, we had, there's all kinds of stories I can tell about. I, I, anybody know that anybody that lived uh, and survived swine flu? Bird flu, swine flu, uh, 1918. Well, my dad had it. it, it, it so I, I know people. Nobody, uh, nobody knew. I asked people, well, have you, uh, anybody here know anybody that ever had TB? And my cousins, my dad's cousins had it, and uh, so they would have been my second or third cousin. They'd be in a TB house, devastating, just devastating. And uh, we were taught never hug, never touch, never eat or drink there. Ooh. And that kind of ended in the 50s and 60s. That was kind of over. Oh, and I said, polio. You, uh, polio is different. You don't get polio today. Well, the wife and I, we, I knew people that had polio. The girl down the street, she was in a wheelchair, had braces on her legs. My aunt had it. Pardon? My aunt had it. Your aunt had polio. So you know somebody that had, you know, had polio. You, you don't see that today. Water. Birth, uh, well, not, we're, we're not looking for the, we're not looking for that right now. Birth defects and, and so on. You don't seem to see that like years ago. Uh, uh, how wars are fought. World War I was fought a certain way. Uh, they ended the charge probably within the first month. It didn't work because of the, because you didn't have those guns. Uh, World War II was fought differently than World War I. The wars that are fought today are different than World War II, different than Vietnam. They're fought differently. Just the way it is. But there was a war that was fought 2,000 years ago <coughs> by our Lord. And he fought that war for everybody in this room and everybody in the world. And he got the victory, amen. He got victory over death. He, he was slated to win right from the beginning. He couldn't lose. And I, I hope you enjoy the victory that he got. Now, the other things that I had mentioned, you may say, well, I, I can't experience that, and, and how can I know that those things are true? You can only accept it by what the things I said and by people that have undergone it. But remember this, our Savior's not dead. Amen. He lives. Amen. He came out of that grave alive. You may say, well, I haven't met him. I haven't shook his hand to congratulate him. I, I, uh, 
But folks, doesn't Jesus live and doesn't he live in our hearts that Christ lives in our hearts by faith? And living in your heart, doesn't he speak to you by faith and say, I'm alive. And one day we, we have no fear of going to the grave. For we will rise again, amen, because Jesus got the victory. Amen. And he will uh, bring us home. I brought up, uh, today is Weirdo Day. They proclaim another Weirdo Day. May as well claim it right on Easter, right? Weirdo Day. Now, and, and I know people are upset, coochie lip and all. What do you expect from the world? I say amen to it, bring it. It just means they hate us, they hate us all the more. It, all it does is all the more prove that Jesus lives. Amen. Amen. And according to the verse that we're about to read, it says the, the world will rejoice in the death of Jesus. You know, if... I don't know if the conservatives would, rejo would rejoice if if Biden were assassinated. But man, I would say liberals would rejoice if they see Trump get assassinated. That's what's next on the list, folks. But the Bible's so true. Barely, barely, Father, bless now the preaching. Help the saints enjoy their risen Savior all the more today because of it now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. That's our verse for today. Our title today is He Lives. So may the tr preaching begin, amen? <laughs> when Jesus Christ was laid in the grave, oh, how his enemies rejoiced, and oh, how his disciples mourned. They were saddened. You know, the enemies remember that he said, three days and three nights, I'm coming out. But the disciples, they were pretty absent-minded. They didn't remember that. They didn't think of that. But his enemies remember when they placed that guard to make sure that he wasn't coming out of there. But he came out. It was in Christ that his disciples had placed their hope. That it was he who should have redeemed Israel. But now their hopes were buried in his grave. It was those that had left everything to follow Christ. Every once in a while, I, I, it does pass my mind. I, uh, I, I gave up. I didn't stop working. <clears throat> but I decided to give up the world because there's no reward for what I'm doing in the next life. And if there are, it's minimal compared to following Christ. <clears throat> You know, I debate, we, we want to get back in the IX Center. I know this isn't the preaching, but what else are we going to do? Want to get in there and put that puppet show in there? Let the teenagers run it? Invite people back to see how it's done? The friend people, you, you've got to make friends to, in order to win them. Win them for Jesus. Those that had left everything to follow Christ. Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Not as a rich young ruler who would not sell all, he, all that he had and give it to the poor, but the disciples who had left all for Christ. They left all. Little was Peter's all. I mean, he didn't have a lot, but he left that. 
Little was Peter's all, but to Peter it was much. The difficulty is not in the leaving of it, but the leaving of it in the heart. It's easy to leave it, but wherever your heart, you know, where their heart is, right? Oh, my, my, whatever you love, man. Oh, the heart, the tools of the carpenter. The tools of the carpenter are to him as the palace to the prince. Whatever it may be, its purchase price was not worth heaven. Peter, he was the fisherman, he left his boat. Matthew, he, he, he's the government agent, the publican, who left his position. And then there was Nicodemus. He's the Pharisee. He left his pride. And then there's Zacchaeus. He knew how to make a buck. The, the, now Zacchaeus is the, is the MGM uh, gambler and the uh, stockbroker. He's the extortioner. He left his riches. And then there's James and John, the businessmen. They left their business. And then there's Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart, the civil servant. She left her post. Again, I say the tools of the carpenter are to him as the palace is to the prince. The heart of the poorest may cleave more to a few worthless pennies than the rich to his thousands. Always remember, the sin is not in the money. The sin is in the love of it. Amen. To be much sorrowful in Christ's death is to have placed one's all in Christ. So then the greater the sorrow meant the greater the joy when discovering that Jesus actually arose. Is when the, the disappointment was so great, great and then when they realized, now, now see, we, we get accustomed to it. Because we have Easter every year. Remember, there was the first Easter, and they, they were thrilled. Christ responded, no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, right? They're going to receive a hundredfold later on, right? Peter said, we have left all. Christ responds with the least to the greatest. He said, house, parents, brethren, wife, and children. Each one in order lies deeper in one's heart. The more that one has given up for Christ, the more he will rejoice in the risen Christ. He lives. He lives to the theme of the Apostle Paul, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. As it says in Luke, the Lord is risen indeed. Strange as it is, it is true. It is the very fabric of our faith. There are most who believe not. I mean, most people don't believe. You, you may say, well, you know, churches are pretty well packed out, all denominations. You know, it, it is Easter. We call them C&E. Christians, uh, Christ, Christmas and Easter, Christmas. They, but they, they believe not. They're there. Why well, know why they're there? Because they know it's the right thing to do. It's not just to make mom and dad happy or their grandparents who are dead happy. They know it's the right thing to do. There are most who believe not. Yet just as, as at his birth, Christ reveals himself to the believers. If they had not believed his miracles, his teachings, his life, they would not have believed his resurrection. Those who scoff at the resurrection are the swine who trod upon the pearls cast at their feet. Upon the upright there riseth light in the darkness, the word says. Truly the resurrection of Christ revealed to his saints who are the upright, turning sorrow into joy. Uh, the word says, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. 
kind of like it's, it's, it's the favorite, it, it, even amongst churchgoers. Lots of clicking going on. Following conspiracy theories. You know, they follow that. But we have not followed cunningly devised tables. The resurrection is not a cunningly devised table. But the grand truth is converged, uh, confirmed by many infallible proofs of which our faith rests. There is the sorrow of it. He was arrested. He was bound. He was tried. He was condemned. He was executed and buried in the prison of the grave. Yet then there's the joy of it. Yet somehow, Somehow, some way, he lives. He is risen indeed. You know, it didn't matter how many guards were placed there. You know, they fell asleep. You know, you know. Oh, by the way, if you're on guard duty and you fall asleep, what's the penalty for that? Right? They took him in and told him to tell some lies. By the way, Jesus didn't come out that way. He came out some other way. He come out any way he wants. The only reason the stone was rolled away is to prove he wasn't in there. Christ, as it says, the first fruits we are to follow. If it were not true, we would be above. The Bible says this. <clears throat> if there is no resurrection, we are of all men most miserable. We wouldn't be, uh, if there's no resurrection, why are we doing this? See, we'd be of all men most miserable. For our hope would be in this life only. But now his words, as a bell, as the ringing of a bell, it rings true. Destroy this temple, Jesus said, and in three days I will raise it up. Amen. Meaning his body. And as Christ has risen from the dead, so shall we. Amen. Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ that is coming. Whenever that should be. We should be more confident of our rising from the dead than we are in rising from our bed in the morning. Amen. Christ rising from the dead is the promise of our resurrection. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus. Is not Christ the head of the church? The Bible states that he's the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church. And if the head be raised, shall not the rest of the body be raised to be joined to the head? Come on, just simple logic. We the body of Christ, not just in soul and in spirit, but our literal bodies. Did we not serve God with our bodies? Our eyes beheld the lost, our hands have brought the lost, our feet have sought the lost, our tongues have invited the lost, as it is written. Christ yielded up the ghost. When he yielded up the ghost, the Bible says the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. God can more easily raise the body out of the grave than we can awake a man out of sleep. Yet how can God reunite all of our body, which has returned back to dust and mingled with the clay of the earth? You know, he's going to raise up those that died at sea. You know, when the mighty hood went down, that was, that was the main battleship. That, that was the flagship. Uh, I think in three minutes, 3,000 3, souls died when the Bismarck blew that out of the water. And that has mingled with the uh, uh, salty sea. So I ask, can men separate gold from the ground? Can men separate silver from the ground? And can men separate iron from the ground? then God can separate the dust of our bodies from the dust of this world. And we shall come forth as gold. Amen. As Christ was raised with a glorious body, so shall we. 
It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, and it is raised in power. We rise because he lives. Marvel not at this. But with God, the Bible says, all things are possible. All things. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good under the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil under the resurrection of damnation. The earth shall cast out the dead. The saints rise to glory, and the sinners will rise to their doom. For the saints awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. The saints and the sinners are as the chief butler and the chief baker. These are all stories in the Bible that have significance for Christians. The chief butler came out of the prison and was restored to all his honor at Pharaoh's court. That's us. But for the sinners, as the chief baker out of prison who was executed. Again, I say, all of Christianity rests, all of it rests on the resurrection. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, the Bible says, and your faith is also vain. Amen. You know, we want to go out into the world and preach Christ. Why? Because he lives. The resurrection, this was Job's comfort. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Amen. Job says, death, as it says in the word, man goeth to his long home. The grave is man's long home, but glory be to God, it is not his last home. Amen. It will not be, uh, that across the street will not be our last home. Death separates body and soul and spirit, but the resurrection restores their union. As when David, when he found Saul asleep, he took away his spear and cruise of water. Saul's sleep was as death because a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen upon them. Yet when Saul awoke, his spear and cruise of water was restored him again. As we're joining body and soul and spirit together at the resurrection, this body of ours, our friends will bring us to the grave, carry us there. But God will not leave us in the grave. We will wake out of sleep, amen. And while we are in the grave, he will watch over our dead bodies as Rizbah watched over the dead bodies of the sons of Saul and guarded them from the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. At death, the body, the soul, and the spirit are separated until the coming of the Lord. Uh, when we die, it will be instantly absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. The body buried and the soul and the spirit carried into heaven to get a foretaste of the glory that is set before us to taste of the fruits of the land, just as the spies were sent before to taste of the fruits of the land. So at death, the soul and the spirit is sent before into heaven to taste of the fruits of the holy land. And when the time has come, and the time will come, when the time has come, for the Lord to return, the grave shall deliver up their dead. When the judge comes, the jailer must deliver up his prisoners. We are coming up out of the grave. As God said to Jacob, as God said to Jacob, I will go down with thee into Egypt and I will also surely bring thee up again. So the Lord will go down with us into the grave and will surely bring us up again. Amen. The resurrection is when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Body and soul and spirit reunited. The body restored as Malchus's ear, which was cut off, was restored. Made like Christ's glorious body. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 
Imagine, they cut off the high priest servant's ear, and Jesus restored it right in front of them, and they still didn't believe. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, like Stephen, whose face shone as it had been the face of an angel. Though we may eat, the need for it will be non-existent. They shall hunger, as the word says, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. We will be as Moses, which went on the mount that is in heaven, went 40 days without food or drink. He was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. Just as also Elijah did, who did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights under the Horeb, the mount of God. We will be as the angels of God in heaven. Carried as Elijah was in a whirlwind, as Elijah outran Ahab's chariot. He lives. The resurrection. It is what Paul was called in question about. You know, they accepted what he said. But when he spoke of the resurrection of the dead, that hit a nerve. He lives the resurrection. It is what Paul was called in, re in question about. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? He uses the word incredible. Incredible. Only one time in the Bible. His resurrection is called in with infallible proofs. The resurrection it was that we follow not cunningly devised fables. All to deal with the resurrection, incredible, is only one time in the Bible. Infallible, only one time in the Bible. Cunningly, only one time in the Bible. Only one time in the Bible. And they all deal directly with the resurrection. Amen. The resurrection, it's infallible, incredible. And it is not some cunningly devised fable. Because he lives, because he lives, we shall live also. Christ himself saith, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. He gives us what we call a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He lives. If it is not true, see, if it is not true, Christianity dies. If it is true, Christianity lives. Ah, the great question. The great question is asked in Genesis, is anything too hard for the Lord? It is the Lord that asks, the Lord is the one that does the asking. So it is what we call a rhetorical question, which expects no answer because the answer is obvious. There is nothing too hard for the Lord, not even the resurrection. The resurrection. Only the mind of Christ can think of such a thing. For with God all things are possible. The resurrection. If Christ be our forerunner, it is he we run after in the resurrection. Death. What I say, it's, the, it's really the, the great last war. The war that Christ won. The great war. Death. We as fellow soldiers will all one day face, as Job calls him, the king of terrors. But the captain of our salvation has fought and won, giving us already the victory. Amen. Death, the king of terrors, a vain title, and it is an empty boast made by Satan. The conqueror is conquered. In the eyes of the world, death is as Goliath and Christ is as David, but a youth. But death could not keep Christ, and Christ broke the chains of death as Samson broke the seven green withs that were never dried. 
He break, broke the withs as a thread of tow is broken when it has touched the fire. Christ laughed at death as he who laugheth at the shaking of a spear. It is only an idle threat. Ah, the resurrection designed by the great architect of life to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, of his own will. Christianity is founded upon a rock and that rock is the resurrected Christ. The rains have fallen, the floods have come, the winds have blown and beaten upon the house, but it is not fallen, for it is built upon the rock of Jesus. Amen. Christ, not the foolish man to build upon the sand, but the wise man who built upon himself the rock. The salvation found in Christ, the blood of Christ, what does it save us from? Job said, I have found a ransom. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. What does it save us from? The power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Christ has paid the price for our passage from this life unto eternal life. What a ticket. You know, they say there's no tickets anymore. It's on your phone or Somehow said, you don't, you don't get a, a, a ticket. Jesus is our ticket. <laughs> the ransom. To ransom us from the power of the grave to redeem us from death. Why? Because we are sinners. For the wages of sin is death. The grave cannot hold us any more than it could hold him. Before death, we exercise faith, faith right now. In death, we exercise feeling, right? It could be painful. But after death, we exercise facts. The facts are this. We're coming out alive, amen. This corruption shall put on incorruption and shall be forever with the Lord. For the saints of old as well as the saints of the new, the fear of sinning vastly, it vastly outweighs the thought of death. More afraid to sin than die. I mean, in the past, they were more afraid to sin than to die. As it says, Three Hebrew children, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were not afraid, but there was the fear of sin. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They would rather tough than have sinned. As also Paul, the great Christian hero, the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and affliction abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might, see, he was more willing to die than not finish his course in sin, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. For the saints of old, they love not their, it says, for the saints of old, they love not their lives unto the death. They would rather die than sin. Why? Because he lives. Christ rising from the dead is the promise of our resurrection. Is not Christ, again I say, is not Christ the head of the church? And if the head be raised, shall not the rest of the body be raised to be joined to the head? Is that not so? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, this is our verse, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. 
See, our resurrection will <clears throat> in part our resurrection has already taken place for we are already seated in heavenly places. <clears throat> so today I hope the resurrection of Christ will always be the joy of your heart. Shake hands before leaving. Amen.